Hi everyone, OT Life Hacker here, and we are gonna hack into my second day of field work at the acute care setting. So I'm in the hospital. They have acute rehabilitation, acute care, and hospital. Oh, uh, sorry, not hospital, and skilled nursing. And I am primarily in acute care, and today being the second day I well technically first day first day out on the actually shadowing the OT and everything yesterday was orientation today is first day of on the floors and all that oh my gosh I got to do my first two evaluations uh, well documentation the second one was by myself for the documenting what happened in the session and then the first documentation I went over with my CI which is my clinical instructor or fieldwork educator there's different terms used I was there working on it with my clinical my fieldwork educator instructor and Oh, I loved it. It was so wonderful. I got to do, I participated, helped with six patient visits today. It included patients with a closed head injury. So one person had experienced injuring themselves at work and had a major gash in their on their skull and so it had to be closed up so they had surgery there and they are in recovery right now and occupational therapy is working with them on being able to get up out of bed we went for a walk we were gonna head to the bathroom we did some cleaning of the face and other grooming, brushing the hair, brushing the teeth. And we also have had patients with stroke, one of them being the right cerebral vascular artery stroke. I hope I said that right. I'm drawing a blank on CVA. So someone please correct me if I said that wrong. Oh my goodness. And also new, there are several new diagnoses of HIV. And let's see. And that is human immunodeficiency virus. And craniotomy. So again, more surgery to the brain. Um, and these were more for for um, masses. There were some benign masses, so tumors that needed to be removed. And there was also a um, neck fracture, uh, but this was... It's funny because many of the times you have no idea what to expect when you go in. When you even show up for the day, you have your list of patients but you can never predict when you're going to see them because you always have factors that you have to work around that you cannot control say for example the patient is not wanting to do therapy at the time they just ate their family well during this time at this hospital family is not visiting due to the, the current situation of everything around the road and and if that's the same for you in your hospital please feel free to comment below because i admit when i first learned of this it makes sense but it is the, the human part of us is like oh my goodness the poor families can't visit just like in skilled nursing facilities it's it's it is sad that during such times in times that there's traumatic different uh, changes for everyone dramatic changes this may be a time where families need each other most, but unfortunately we, that cannot happen due to the situation of everything. And so again, that's why little note guys, please make sure you are being safe. Um, keep your, again, wash your hands carefully, 
Make sure you have good hygiene. Do not um, touch your face if your hands are not clean. And social distancing, if possible, try to stay away from people. But you know, we understand that can be hard. So social distancing at least, the very least six feet. Um, we also, I got to learn about, so back up, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm like, everything I wanted to share, uh, as I was saying that, there was a lot of factors, we, ex we were hoping to see 10 patients, went to their rooms, so it's a very good thing that you go to the patient's room, just like do a lap around the, the hall, the, um, the area where the rooms are to see if they're working with someone right now, if they're sleeping, or what is the situation right now for them. Are they going to be, are you going to be able to see them at that time? There was even one of the patients we went to, the sign was up for isolation and the sign apparently was an old sign not taken down, so it's good that we got that cleared up before we went into the room. And there were other cases. We were working with a client who they had sat up in bed and mentioned that they're not feeling well, and all of a sudden they start vomiting and feeling very nauseous and so those are cases where it really changes what your day is going to look like with them and may even stop therapy for the day maybe you'll come back later to check on them um, some clients some patients may have had too much therapy in their day too many people seen them at once so that's why it's good to have that check-in with the OT I mean with the occupational therapy speech therapy physical therapy to see to coordinate that care if possible to see when they had checked in on the patient and if the ch patient can tolerate more therapy in the day and also we've had there are many times of the um, other providers, healthcare providers coming in and needing to check on them while we were there. And so a lot of dynamic situations at play. You never know what to expect. It's, it's crazy. It's that unpredictableness that is unpredictableness in a controlled environment, meaning that anything can happen. But because you are in a safe, controlled environment, you work around it, you can easily work around it, and it is amazing. I love that, uh, that element to it. And so as I said, we got to see six of the patients, and tomorrow we're going to get to see more patients, which is yoo of course, I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, my uh, my super the the head supervisor came in earlier to check on me. They're like, "So how are you doing? Um, you must be tired by now." I'm like, "No." <laughs> I'm like, "Am I supposed to be tired? Cause I'm still good." And okay. This is not going to be the case for a lot of us. I am sure of that. I've heard, I know this is a little odd, so do not, ex I mean odd for, you know, it's unique to me. Do not expect to be a ball of energy like me. That's not something that you should expect. Not saying you should expect to be dead tired, which is often what I find happening for many people. But, um, and I could even do another video on on preventing burnout in field work, how to do self-care. Let me know if you want that video. I would love to do that. Um, I personally, I'm going to see how long I can keep up this every day, uh, sending out a video after I do my field work. So the day of field work, I send out that video for all of you to see and check out. Um, because... I, I have, I 
can discipline myself enough to do that video every day if you want it so if you do like these videos these vlog videos every day please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe uh, give comment share with others let me know uh, what you thought of the video all of that because if it's not helpful to you guys for me to do the videos every day, then, you know, I could stop it. Um, I will try to, uh, before, while waiting to hear from you guys, I'll try to keep them up because I, I hope that they will help you in your own day of field work and preparing for that big day to come. It's daunting, it's, it's scary, it's nerve wracking, but once you're in it, if you know that OT is for you, you will feel a flurry of emotions. And that can even mean that you'll feel burnt out. I'm not going to lie. You can feel burnt out because you're like, oh my gosh, I did so much. I worked so hard. I stayed up so late studying and I didn't eat lunch because I was doing, doing notes the whole time. I mean, that happens, but you do have to be very careful to help prevent that for yourself. And again, if you want a video on that, let me know and I can gladly make a video for you on that. And I did want to talk about documentation uh, as a last part. So one of the things that I had learned was about one of the many things was documentation. So what we want to put in our documentation in my setting, but also in general, is you want the patient history. You want to know if they had, what their new treatment is, what their current treatment and current status is, and their current level of functioning, their prior level of functioning, and any recommendation, the recommendations you have, any precautions you need, to uh, inform others about and in, in overall what happened during your session keep it objective with your appraisal of course I mean keep it objective and add your appraisal of the situation of the, the therapy session and as I'm going through field work I take this notebook with me everywhere uh, I don't sometimes don't take it in the patient rooms especially with what's going on now but this is my to go to notebook and I have everything in here um, terms that I have for myself on so you can see the terms and all of that and those are like abbreviations a lot of medical terms that I need to look up for myself and you can ask your, your field work educator if it's okay for you to take, um, to take your phone with you and, and research this stuff on the go as you're going because you might need it for note taking and all that, but you can always look on the computer too, research on the computer. So figure out what works for you and your field work educator. I had been throwing in little hints here and there and also we had this formal meeting for what works for me, what works for him, asking my field work educator what are some best ways for um, uh, in your like how do you teach and how can I make my adjust for that, how can I adjust for that as well as if he's if he appears open to it, if he or she appears open to your interests, um, gauge, it's all about gauging your fieldwork educator. And also, hey guys, if you want a video on fieldwork education, um, fieldwork educator, clinical instructor training, we learned about this in class and if you are in occupational therapy i'm sure you're going to learn about it yourself but for those of you who are interested in occupational therapy and watching this or even want a refresher on field work on the relationship of the student and the supervisor uh, i can definitely give you that insight from class books and from my own personal role as the as the student and with my supervisor and with my previous supervisors and me being the student 
Okay, so that is everything for today. I'm gonna go home, have myself some dinner, and spend time with my significant other. And I might even go to the park for a nice run. The park is um, not too far from me, so I might go for a run. Um, that's my occupational balance and probably do a little bit of studying again tonight just as a refresher. Take a look at some uh, notes that I took on documenting because I'll be doing more documentation tomorrow. Let's hope for, I'm hoping that I do at least two by myself and if possible um, by the end of the day have five documentations done by myself and maybe I can even do some evals, uh, do some actual patient encounters with me leading it. That would be so cool. But you know, we I just started day one. <laughs> this is day one or if you count orientation, which we did not do any, any hands-on work or really um, patient encounters, no patient encounters. If you don't count orientation then this is day one and it's so cool because I actually got to do documentation I got to do two document uh, two e two I got to document two of the evaluations we did today and I got to participate in six ev six six patient encounters and I even got to do the visual testing, some of the visual testing on the patients. Boy, was I having fun. I loved it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wait for my excitement tomorrow. Because <laughs> there's more to come. Woohoo! Bye, guys.